Hello, I'm in Scotland and the season is... Well, which one do you think it might be? It could be spring, summer, autumn or winter. Here come some clues. In this season, the weather's generally much colder. Sometimes there's frost or even snow. Animals and birds may have to search really hard for their food. The days are shorter and the sun is lower in the sky. Yes, you guessed it, it's winter. Well, you must have done. I mean, just look at all the clothes I've got to wear to keep me wrapped up nice and warm. But how do the plants and animals cope with keeping out the cold in the winter months? Some animals, like these sheep, have their own winter coats thick woolly fleeces which help to keep them nice and warm. Other creatures, like hedgehogs and dormice, hibernate. They miss the winter altogether. Some birds migrate. They fly to much warmer countries. Trees, like this birch, protect themselves by losing their leaves in the autumn. This helps the tree because in cold, wintry weather, it can't take in any water through its roots. If it had leaves, it would lose water through them and dry up. The pine, on the other hand, doesn't lose much water through its needle-like leaves because they have a thick, leathery covering, so it doesn't need to lose them in the winter. Although winter's a really difficult season, some plants and animals are adapted to survive in the cold. And that's why I've come all the way up here to the Cairngorm Mountains to meet some animals that seem to prefer winter to summer. Reindeer, and in fact around me is the only herd of reindeer you can find in Britain and they're very very tame because Fiona and Tilly here feed them every day to keep them nice and healthy. They're extremely well adapted to the cold though aren't they? That's right, the, the special adaption is their coats. It's a thick dense coat, it's not too long but each hair is hollow and just like the hollow fill in a duvet the reindeer have got a great big duvet wrapped around them, basically. So when you run your hands along, they might have frost on the outside, but deep down close to the skin, they're really warm. Now, another thing I've noticed while they're milling around us here is that these are mostly cows, that's females up here, aren't they? And yet they've all got antlers. It's unique to reindeer. The males and the females have antlers, and the females use them to compete for food. They fight with them. Now, the hair being so good for keeping them warm, it extends right down onto their feet too, doesn't it? They've got really furry feet. Furry feet? to keep them warm, but also to stop them slipping on ice and snow. Great big feet for walking on the snow, spreads the weight well in soft snow, but also they have to get down to their food underneath the layers of snow, and they can use those feet to dig down through the snow to get to their food. And what about their noses? I mean, as you're feeding there, to touch them, they've got really furry noses. That's right. Reindeer have a wonderful furry nose, and they're delightful to feed as a result. It means that when they push their noses down through the snow, they keep their noses nice and warm. But also when they're breathing out warm air, it doesn't then freeze on a wet, shiny nose. It keeps nice and warm and dry. Well, the reindeer can certainly survive just fine up here, however cold it is. But for other animals, the cold can be a lot more serious. When it's cold, birds have to fluff up their feathers. A layer of air is trapped around their bodies, and that helps to keep them warm. Sometimes they even stand on one leg, hiding the other one in their feathers. But the main problem for birds in winter is finding natural food, like insects, berries, seeds or nuts. These become much, much more scarce as winter goes on. 
And that's where you could help out. Whether you live in the countryside, in the town, or even in a big city, you could put out a regular supply of food and water for the birds. But what sort of food should you put out? Well, I've come here to Kirkton Primary School near Inverness to find out. <laughs> Now, Matthew, what are we going to do here? We are going to make a bird cake. A bird cake? Yes. Something nice for the birds to eat in winter. And Donna, what do we have to do first? How do we begin? Well, first of all, we find some recipes. So we know what to put in it. Yes. And we've got to find 500 grams of these lovely ingredients that we've got in front of us. They give the birds loads of energy in winter, don't they? What have we got at the end, Ian? What are you going to put in first? We've got some crumbled cake. Crumbled up cake. It looks delicious, doesn't it? Do you want to put it in the scales? And what have you got here, Mari? I've got some oatmeal and currants. Oatmeal and currants. Right, then we can have a bit more cake. And then you put your oatmeal and currants in. Keep going. Okay. And now some currants. And there's a big tub here. That's a heavy one. That's the peanuts. All right. And put some peanuts in. Now, Matthew, do you want to come round with your seeds? I think we could have most of those seeds. Keep going. A bit more. And there's our 500 grams. What happens next, Donna? We put it in a container. Right, well, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to take the ingredients here and we've got to put them into this bowl. And then, Mari, do you want to stir them up? Okay, here we are. A nice big spoon, you stir it. Now what happens when we've got all the ingredients mixed together? We pour the melted fat over the mixture, but you have to be very careful with the fat. So it should always be an adult that handles the fat, shouldn't it? So Miss McDonald, our teacher, pours the melted fat over the mixture for us. Oh, and what happens to it? So it gets sticky. It sort of goes into a a gooey mess, doesn't it? The fat makes all the ingredients stick together. And when the fat starts to go hard, you can put it into a pot like this. This is a yoghurt pot with string to hang it up, but you could use half a coconut maybe, and the bird cake mixture goes in here and it goes all solid, and then the birds can come and eat it. It's chilly out here, isn't it? So we want to put these things on the bird table quite quickly. Gavin's going to hang his bird cake up. There's already one on there. And if I put these treats on the bird table there. OK, let's go inside and watch now. Now, what have we got out there at the moment? We've got birds already, haven't we, Isabel? Yes. Yeah. What's there? Uh, it's a blue tit and it's eating from the top of the bird cake that we put out earlier this week. Its tail's very blue and its head's blue as well. And at the top of its wings it's green, kind of greeny yellow, and its breast is yellow. And what else have you seen on the bird table? There's been lots of chaffinches, and robins and different kinds of other tits, like the great tits. That's excellent. And birds that have come just a couple of seconds after we put the bird cakes out. So remember, you could feed your own local birds too. We're going to keep on watching these. If you do decide to feed them, do it regularly and make sure you put some water out too. You'd be surprised after just a short time how many different sorts of birds you'll be able to see. <laughs> I've come to the Siberian Husky Club of Great Britain's annual rally. We're right up in the mountains, so one minute it's not snowing, the next minute the whole world turns white. 
Now, Huskies are a really interesting breed of dog because for generations they've been bred especially to cope with these sort of weather conditions. They used to be used a lot in the coldest parts of the world for people like explorers or maybe doctors who needed to get fast from one place to another across the snow. They might not be used for that sort of thing very much these days, but people can still have a lot of fun with them. Go! Now this is a two-year-old Siberian Husky called Kasha, and this is his owner, Cerise. Cerise, tell me a bit how he's adapted to work in the snow. He's got very upright ears with lots and lots of fur inside, so he can keep his ears warm during the winter season. And he's got very special eyes too, hasn't he? Yes, he's got one brown eye and one blue eye, and that is very common. For them to have one of each, it looks most unusual, doesn't yes. it? Yes. And what about his eyelashes? They're very special as well, because they protect his eyes from the snow. And he's also got a special coat, hasn't he? Yes, he's got two layers of fur, which is just like a double coat. Oh, I see. So if I part the hair, there's that soft grey fur near his skin, and then the longer white fur over the top? Yes. <laughs> If you come out to watch an event like this in winter, you have to really wrap up warm, don't you? In fact, wherever you are in the country, you'll notice that it's much colder in the winter months than it is in the other seasons. But do keep a look out for when those seasons change, because it doesn't just happen overnight. Sudden milder weather can be deceptive, though. This hedgehog has ventured out of hibernation when there's still snow on the ground. But in other parts of the country, beneath the trees still bare of leaves, there's an early sign of spring, snowdrops. So in different parts of the country, winter may already be on its way out and spring will soon be here. Certainly still winter here. Watch and see what it's like near you. Bye-bye.